Hello, Bible readers. It is Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. Uh, we're reading from Jeremiah 27 to 30 and Hebrews 9, verse 11 through 10, 18. Uh, we'll be in Jeremiah and Hebrews pretty much all week. Um, and as we continue our way throughout this week, uh, it's interesting how Hebrews plays off of Jeremiah. It's obviously quite intentional that we continue to read these books together. Um, chapters 26 to 36 of Jeremiah, those 11 chapters, are uh, all about conflict and comfort, a section that is only loosely connected to each other. There's really a few different sections within these 11 chapters. Um, they say they're loosely connected because they're set at different times in Jeremiah's life and in the history of Judah. Uh, they are, there are announcements of judgment and announcements of salvation all within these chapters. So in 27 to 29, which I know we're reading through 30 today, but that fits better in tomorrow's uh, Bible reader. So in 27 to 29, uh, it's interesting because Jeremiah, Zedekiah, and Nebuchadnezzar are spelled differently than in the rest of the book. So obviously there's something going on there, maybe about authorship, maybe about time or setting. The theme in these chapters, it's all about increasing hopes that Judah and surrounding nations will maybe be able to rebel against Babylonian domination. This is a very different vibe to how the rest of Jeremiah feels, which is, it's going to happen. There's no getting out of it. Uh, what's tough for a reader, then, is to decide, because Jeremiah tries to make the, the claim that God is using Babylon to carry out God's judgment. Like, God's got this. God's in complete control. God's choosing for God's people to go into captivity. And yet, there's a text like this, you know, do we hope that Judah will successfully fight back against God's agents of judgment? Uh, are we supposed to do that? Because Jeremiah is kind of leading us to go there. Uh, so there's this tension, even within Jeremiah, as he seems to kind of play it both ways. But some would say maybe it's not even one singular voice uh, being used here in the book of Jeremiah. Okay, Hebrews. The language of Jeremiah chapter 31 gets thought through more here in Hebrews. And so we've got all this talk of sacrificial victims and blood, and they're tough illustrations, <laughs> I'll admit, to for, for us Christians in 2021 to hold easily. Um, so let, let me read part of my, I think, I think this might help. It may not help exactly explain what Hebrews is trying to say. For that, I think we'd need to do a, a much more in-depth Bible study. I think it gets at why Hebrews does what it does, or even maybe how Hebrews is trying to accomplish its theological claim. So it says, the density of the text of Hebrews and its unfamiliar vocabulary will be somewhat daunting. The frequent repetition of points already made may dull interest. But perhaps most critical for fruitful engagement with this material will be introducing participants to a world of ritual. For many, a strange and new world. And then this commentary goes on to talk about how there's a tent or tabernacle that is a tent of meeting, a place for meeting, not other persons, for fellowship and conviviality, but a place for meeting God. In the tabernacle are pieces of furniture, each with historical and theolo theological significance. Blah, blah. There's like a long paragraph about how there's so many detailed pieces of ritual that we can't, we can't really understand and we easily will disregard as being unimportant. But here's the thing. What if I got rid of that ritual you always do for Thanksgiving or birthdays or Christmas or there's something in your life that's, that's rich with ritual and those rituals make it significant and more meaningful. Now multiply that by God. And that's what Hebrews is trying to do, to communicate what Jesus means to us as humans. The author is trying to invoke those rituals that would be so 
important and meaningful. Uh, and so that that's that's how Hebrews is trying to work. That doesn't make Hebrews easier for us to understand, but I think it can help us be a little more merciful about how like boring it is and difficult to be significant to ourselves it is. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.